Welcome back to Afternoons on 11. Time now to check in with members of our studio audience, and I understand you guys have questions, correct? Yes. Tell me your name and where you're from, and then post your question. Uh, Mike Matthews. I'm from Collinsville. I teach at Collinsville High School. And then what's your question, sir? Uh, it's to Edgar. Uh, Edgar, overcoming this challenge uh, and meeting it, how do you feel that it has prepared you for future challenges uh, in your life, and what's your next big goal? Well, I feel like it's prepared me for, you know, what's to come, like, what kind of obstacles are going to come, like, say if, say if something, like, hurtful happened or whatever, I'd learn to deal with it positively. I wouldn't learn to dwell on it negatively, and by eating and stuff, I'd just deal with it by doing a lot of exercise. That's what I do with all my problems. Awesome. Good answer. All right, sir, and your name, where are you from? My name is Portland. I'm from Edwardsville, Illinois. My question is to Edgar as well. I just want to know what your defining moment was. My defining moment was definitely when I had gone to the doctors and they took some blood from me to do like a blood test and when the results turned they were horrible uh, there were symptoms of high blood pressure they were telling they told me that I was going to become a diabetic soon and that just scared me the most because both my parents have diabetes and I didn't want that I didn't want my life to have to resolve around taking shots or taking pills daily constantly just to live Good questions. Thank you guys so much. Time now to check your comments on our Facebook page. And who do we hear from? Kimberly. Kimberly says, 150 pounds is a big deal, especially for a high school student. Good job to this young guy. Woohoo! Way to go, Edgar. That's what I'm talking about. Wanda wants to know, okay, Charles, I think this one is for you. Wanda sure. wants to know, she says, what kind of exercises can I do after having heart surgery in 2012? and then back surgery in March of this year. Any suggestions? Absolutely. The first thing you want to look at before going down that exercise route is what are you putting in your body? Because to have that physical support system where you really feel healthy, you really feel charged up, and you have all the energy and endurance to be able to do the exercise, you have to make certain that you're nourishing your body. So you have to give your body the right energy with food. So look at your diet first. Also make certain that you're talking with your doctor while you're going through this whole process. When you have those types of serious procedures, it's crucial, and this is for anyone that's looking to change their life, whether you're a type two diabetic or you're a person that just wants to lose 10 pounds, your doctor is there to help give you insight that you perhaps don't have. So make certain to involve them. So look at your foods first. From a weight loss perspective, my recommendation always is start with cardiovascular exercise. Whether it be walking five to 10, 15 minutes around your neighborhood to begin with, Edgar started with just running back and forth in his backyard. He didn't have the access to a gym. He didn't have the access to some special equipment. He made use of what he had. So start to get your heart healthy healthy by doing regular cardiovascular act activity. That could be on a treadmill, elliptical, or just walking outside. With your back, you may have to talk to your doctor about having the right exercise in the mix so that you don't further injure yourself. Lastly, make certain that you set compelling goals. One of the audience questions was, of course, what's next for Edgar? And it's so important to stay focused on what's next. Don't get caught up in your past and don't get too caught up on all the accomplishments of the moment. I'm not saying not to enjoy them. I'm saying stay focused on where you're moving and stay focused on setting a compelling vision for your future because without vision, what do people do? What's the ancient scripture say? Perish. So make certain that you keep compelling goals in the mix. Good answer. All right. And Kina asks, how can I keep myself motivated? I start, then I feel like I'm not losing, and I stop. You need to have more than one measure of success. If you attribute all of your success simply to the number on the scale, you're going to find yourself terribly frustrated. It's critical that you look at more than one facet of success. So ask yourself, are you making certain that this week, despite temptation, you've stayed true to your goals? That's an, an accomplishment, a success in itself. Are you judging how your clothes are fitting? Because oftentimes, although the number on the scale may seem to stall, there's all sorts of changes happening from a blood chemistry level, like Edgar talked about, wherein your body's improving, you're getting healthier, and your clothes are thereby changing as well. Lastly, ask yourself, what are the reasons behind doing this? If you have compelling reasons, that will continue to fuel that fire when you do hit those periods of consolidation when your body's adjusting. So motivation is like something that is short term. You've got to have a real compelling reason to keep going. And with a long list of compelling reasons that you keep adding to, you won't be stopped in the attainment of your goal. All right, good answer. Full screen now. Remember, KPLR 11 is always on, and we want to hear from you. Just leave your comments on our Facebook page. Stick with us. Final thoughts are up next. <laughs>